Addendum, part two. Why is stuttering so complicated, confusing, and difficult to overcome? Why do 25% of those who start this program fail to put in the necessary intense time and effort required to make reasonable progress and succeed? After 26 years of doing this and observing myself and the thousands of members of the McGuire program, especially during our yearly evaluation time, which I recommend you read on our website, I've come up with six possible answers to these questions, some of which are obvious, but very hard to look at. Reason number one, something you've heard me say several times. Little three, four-year-old kids can do this thing called speaking so easily, as do roughly 95% of the world's population who don't have other speaking issues. Confusion happens to your listener when you, as an adult or teenager, especially an adult, who have made significant other achievements, can't do this simple skill. It's probably the primary thing that makes us targets for bullies to mock and otherwise disrespect us. Those trying to overcome stuttering, however they choose to go about it, need to accept the fact that they need to learn to speak all over again, which is hard to accept because little kids do it. They're thinking, what, who, me? I make a lot of money, live in a big house, drive a fancy car. Why do I, with all my education, abilities, and accomplishments, have to put intense time and effort to really try to do something that little kids do so easily? This, by the way, is called arrogance. Reason number two. Add to this phenomenon of the good day where, probably because something very good has happened, you feel great and are blabbing away to friends like, well, a normal fluent speaker. And your listeners who know of your problem are thinking on the same level, wow, I knew he could do it. Then a few days later, when things aren't so great, the old phobia gets triggered. Here comes the panic reactions, F-S-D-T-A. And you can barely get a word out. Listeners thinking, hey, he was fine yesterday. Now I can barely understand a word he's saying, and he's all messed up. And at some level, you're thinking the same thing. More brutally, yesterday I was doing what little kids can do. Today I can't do what little kids do so easily. Reason number three for the resistance to really try. Add to this the unspeakable fact that what we say and how we say it is our personality. It's how people experience it. More specifically, it is the first real impression we make on other people after how we look and dress. How important to your life is our personality and first impressions? I'm one of those who think these things are critical to our existence as viable human beings trying to find happiness, security, and prosperity in this world. Like it or not, the spoken word is our connection to the human race. So we're talking about doing something that is so profoundly important to us, that is so profoundly easy that little kids can do it without thinking, that sometimes we can do, but mostly we can't do. Let that sink in. Reason number four, then taking the, another look at our definition of stuttering. It's at the top of page 31 in the last written edition of Beyond Stuttering. Contemplate just how complicated this is. Try to explain it to a fluent speaker with the interaction between mental, physical, and emotional habits. The physical malfunction of diaphragm, vocal cords, articulators, and especially the uh, emotional habits of shame, guilt, self-hate, sense of isolation, low self-esteem, fear going up, confidence going down. 
at some level, they're thinking confidence. Confidence for what? He needs confidence to do what a little three-year-old kid can do. And he can do it. I heard him speaking just fine yesterday. It's very doubtful if fluent speakers really understand, although many will pretend to understand, as speaking is so ridiculously easy for them. Reason number five. Let's not forget the fear slash punishment-based phobia. We all who stutter, have stored permanently in our subconscious. I just talked extensively about this in Addendum Part 1, but I'll go over it again as it's so important to remember that this irrational fear can be triggered by some stimuli and jump out at us for, many times, no understandable reason, then turns to panic if we're confused, and we go out of control with FSDTA. This contributes to stuttering being so complicated and confusing and difficult to overcome. Reason number six. And the last thing to consider is the damage stuttering has done to our psychosocial selves. Mostly growing up, maturing. How do we mature? How do we make our way through the various stages that Eric Erickson talks about in his eight stages of psychosocial development. The simple answer is we grow up and mature in relation to other people. How do we relate to other people? Mostly through the spoken word. When we can't do this reasonably well, growing up, maturing becomes very difficult. I personally and many of those successful with our program have experienced needing to catch up to our age group, repair the damage, and learn to master social skills. Failure to do this results in stress, which further complicates efforts to overcome stammering. Seeking out a good psychotherapist to help repair this damage and put in the time and effort to follow their directions would speed up this process. There are many options out there for this and many self-help books, but my personal experience with cognitive behavioral therapy was very practical and effective. In addendum part three, I'll be giving a personal account of a very bad relapse I had, which illustrates these six factors which lead to resistance and really putting in time and effort, intense time and effort to overcome stuttering and become good speakers.